Hi, this is Jim with the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality's Environmental Assistance Program. Welcome to the DEQ's e-learning session on Do I Need an Air Permit? This session is the first in a series of sessions provided to help you determine whether or not you need an air permit. During this first session, I will provide you with an overview of Michigan's air permitting requirements and the basic principles of how you determine if a permit is required at your facility. Once you are finished with this session, I encourage you to view the other sessions that have been developed on specific permitting scenarios. Specifically, how to determine if a permit is required when relocating equipment, reconstructing existing equipment, or modifying processes or equipment. This series also contains a good session on how to conduct an air permit survey and where to go for help. All these sessions are available online. Whether you choose to just view one of the sessions or all of them, please don't forget to complete the online evaluation, which can be accessed at the end of each of the sessions. The goal of all these sessions in this series is to provide you with a basic understanding of Michigan's air permitting requirements and help you determine if you need an air permit. If at any time you have questions that are not answered in this session, feel free to give us a call at the Environmental Assistance Center or send us an email at the email address listed on your screen. If you're ready, let's get started. In Michigan, there are two air permitting programs, the Renewable Operating Permit or ROP program and the Permit to Install program, which is sometimes referred to as New Source Review. This session focuses on the Permit to Install program. However, I also want to quickly explain what the ROP program is and who is subject. Renewable operating permits are required under Title V of the Clean Air Act, which is why it is sometimes also called the Title V permit. Only major sources of air pollution have to obtain an ROP. Whether or not you are a major source depends on your facility's potential to emit air contaminants. If you are interested in learning more about the ROP program, you can contact the Environmental Assistance Program or visit the website listed below. The Permit to Install program is applicable to any business in Michigan regardless of its size or whether it's a major source of air pollution or not. This is a permit you need to obtain prior to construction or installation and is the focus of this session. The requirement to obtain a permit to install is contained in Rule R336.1201 or Rule 201 of the Michigan Air Pollution Control Rules. Essentially, Rule 201 requires that a person shall not install, construct, reconstruct, relocate, or modify any process or process equipment that emits an air contaminant without first obtaining a permit to install, unless the process is specifically exempted or if the facility obtains a waiver to begin construction prior to obtaining the permit. So the general rule of thumb is that if you plan to install, construct, reconstruct, relocate, or modify a source of air emissions at your facility, you first need to obtain an air permit, unless the process or activity is exempt. I'm going to talk about the exemptions in just a minute. Before I do that, I want to mention a couple other activities that do not need a permit. You will not need to obtain an air permit for a process or equipment that does not generate an air contaminant. So if the process operates as a closed system or no emissions are generated, it is not subject to Rule 201 and therefore you do not need a permit. Also, you do not need a permit if the equipment is grandfathered. And what we mean by this is if the equipment was installed before August 15, 1967 and it has remained unmodified, it is not subject to Rule 201 because it is a grandfathered source. Let's talk a minute about the permit exemptions because they are probably the first place you're going to focus on when determining if a permit is required. The air permit exemptions are contained in Rules 280 through 290 of the Michigan Air Pollution Control Rules. The emissions from the activities and processes identified in these rules have been determined to be insignificant and therefore do not require an air permit. If you haven't done so already, I recommend that you take the time to review the exemptions. There are a lot of them. The best place to look is the Permit Exemption Handbook, which can be accessed by clicking on the link below. Most of the exemptions are pretty straightforward and specific. 
However, others only apply if specific criteria can be met. For example, Rule 282BI exempts natural gas at burning equipment if their rated heat input capacity is less than 50 million BTU per hour. Also, Rule 281H exempts coal cleaners that have an air vapor interface of not more than 10 square feet. Other exemptions require that specific records be kept to verify compliance. Rule 287C exempts certain coating lines that use less than 200 gallons of coating per month. However, you must keep a monthly record of the coating usage. Rule 290 exempts sources with limited emissions. Depending on the type of air contaminant emitted, the process may be exempt if the monthly emissions are below the thresholds identified. Now, Rule 290 does require that monthly records be kept of the emissions to verify compliance with the rule. When looking at the exemptions, there's a very important exception that you need to be aware of, and that is Rule 278. Now, Rule 278 excludes certain activities from being exempt if the emissions are considered significant. Now, of course, your next question should be, what are significant emissions? The definition of significant is contained in Rule 119E, as shown in the table here. If the emissions exceed any of these thresholds, they are considered to be significant and therefore may be excluded from exemption. The purpose of Rule 278 is to prevent a company from installing a process with significant emissions without a permit to install, or more commonly, installing several emission units covered under the same project with significant emissions without a permit. Rule 278 is a type of screening process for proposed installations or modifications. So what does this mean? Well, if you are planning to install, reconstruct, or modify a source of air emissions, and you find the exemption in the rules, before you can consider it exempt, you have to be sure that the expected emissions will not exceed the significant level. In most cases, it's simple. You're installing a process and find an exemption, and if the expected emissions are below the significant levels, you can consider it exempt. It gets trickier when you have a project plan that entails the installation or modification of several emission units or processes. If this is the case, you need to apply Rule 278 to the entire project, not just the individual process. If the emissions from the entire project exceed the significant levels, you need to obtain a permit for all the processes that are part of the project, even if there is an exemption. To drive this concept home, let's consider an example. A company plans to install three generators over an 18-month time frame. The actual expected emissions of oxides of nitrogen, or NOx, from each generator is ex predicted to be 15 tons per year. Is a permit to install required for the generators? If you look in the Michigan Air Pollution Control Rules, there is an exemption that would apply to generators, and that's Rule 285G, as shown here. And as you can see, the significant level for NOx is 40 tons per year. If only one generator were being installed, the emissions would be less than significant, so the exemption would apply. However, since the three generators are under one project, the total emissions from all three generators are considered when applying Rule 278. Now, since the actual emissions from the project equals 45 tons per year, it exceeds the significant level for NOx, and therefore none of the generators can be considered exempt. A permit is required. Okay, let's review. If you're planning to install a source of air emissions at your facility, the first thing you'll want to do is see if there is an exemption out there. If there is not an exemption, then you will need to obtain an air permit. If you do find an exemption, you need to apply Rule 278 to be sure that the emissions are below significant. If the emissions are greater than significant, you need to obtain a permit. If the emissions are less than significant, the emission unit is considered exempt and a permit is not required. One question you may be asking yourself is, what do I have to do if I determine an emission source is exempt? If you determine that a process or activity is exempt from permitting, 
you do not have to contact the DEQ. However, you should keep a record of your determination on file somewhere. It is recommended that once you've determined that an exemption applies, you verify your determination with your Air Quality Division Inspector. If you do not know who that is, you can find out by calling your district office. If you determine that you need to obtain a permit, you will need to complete the Permit to Install application form, which can be accessed by clicking on the link below. In addition to completing the application form shown here, your application will usually include a lot of other supplemental information, such as site diagrams, emissions calculations, stack parameters, and other information. The issued permit will contain the requirements that the emission source is subject to, which may include emission and material usage limitations, operational restrictions, as well as record keeping, monitoring, and reporting requirements. This concludes the first part of our training. The next sessions pertain to specific permitting scenarios that we get questions about quite often. These sessions include discussions on how you determine if you need a permit when relocating equipment, reconstructing existing equipment, or modifying existing processes or equipment. Feel free to watch all these sessions, or skip to just the sessions you need. If you are finished with this training, please take a moment to complete the online evaluation, which can be accessed by clicking on the link on the screen. Otherwise, please continue on to one of the next sessions. Thank you.